So why DEM in fracture mechanics as opposed to FEM? DEM is versatile and has distinct advantages over FEM as shown. So uh, as intimated earlier, the mesh boundary, uh, let me use a different color there for visibility. The mesh boundary in FEM is based on continuum mechanics. So even when the limiting st stresses are rich, the mesh cannot separate, so you cannot see uh, a fracture. But in DEM, in DEM, so this is the DEM, the top one is FEM, but this is the DEM. So in DEM, in DEM, when the limiting stresses are reached, then you ca the contact models provide for complete detachment, separation and complete detachment. So you, you are able to see your fracture. So this is, uh, this is, This is a distinct uh, characteristic, characteristic, characteristic why people prefer uh, DM. So this is advantageous for, for us if you're interested in fracture mechanics. So we say here DM accounts for when and how. So in DM calculations, like I said in the introductory video, the calculations are, are uh, recorded as a video actually as a movie and timed so you you can tell exactly when the first bond breaks and how it progresses so for example this is an actual model uh, from from we, we, i use edm currently this is an actual model from edm and as if you continue to watch the series of my video you will be able to see a timed uh, actual calculation from EDM that gives you uh, the progression, how the first bond breaks and how it proceeds. So the when and how, for example, here you you will you can you can you are able to see whether the fracture starts from the midpoint here and progresses towards the edges like that, or if the crack starts from the edge here and progresses towards the midpoint. So DM is able to account for when and how, when the crack initiates and how it progresses. And then, uh, for example, I give you, I give an example with direct shear box. So if, you, if this is, sorry, I need to change that for, for visibility. So if, for example, this is the shear box, sample and then you have a plate there and a plate there, sorry a plate there and there's a constant load p and a constant load p there and you have a plate there and a plate here plate there and say these are moving the plates are moving in the direction shown so we will have um a shear zone here so for fem then you just have a color code here fem will just give you a color code and then uh, you will be given uh, some color scheme here so maybe uh, you're told okay this is one mpa for example then uh, here you're given another color code and then down here you're given another color code and then you are told okay this is so much and so on and so forth so this is all we can get in in finite element but if you're interested in fracture mechanics you're not able to see how the bonds break and how the fracture initiates and evolve over time so this is why we prefer discrete element modeling Okay, so this slide is about uh, the computational power. And like I said in the introductory part that the discrete element modeling takes a lot of time. So maybe in 20, 30 years ago, we did not have uh, computers with good uh, enough computational power. So no wonder this method is famous now because you have 
enough computational power uh, we also have supercomputers so uh, and I need to explain a little bit why it's uh, the discrete element modeling takes a, lo a long time so assume you have a model like this uh, for FEM it will be divided into finite element elements as shown probably so so this would be one two three four times one two three four four five elements so this would be four times five 20 elements so even assume uh, some dimension perpendicular to the slide so 20 uh, elements can be easily solved by an FEM uh, in reasonable time but for DEM assume this element uh, if you choose a size of discrete element of maybe one millimeter so and uh, say okay just assume some value so say this one uh, element alone will have 10,000 discrete elements so you'll have 20 times 10,000 so times the direction times the dimension perpendicular to the slide so some value n here so this could be in the millions maybe could be in the millions eh? could be in the value the to total value of the discrete elements could be in the millions and the principle of discrete element cal uh, calculation is a calculation of interaction between particles one particle to another and this interaction is repeated through the, in the, the total until we reach all the total uh, number of discrete elements. So you can imagine if you have millions or more than one, I mean several millions, so that interaction takes a long time. And so this is the reason why discrete element uh, modeling takes a long time. So most 21st century computers are able to solve FEM calculations within reasonable time typically within minutes or just a few days in case of 3D models DM calculations are computationally expensive that requires supercomputer or the very latest enhanced computer models example Core i7 and above with speeds above 3.6 gigahertz good RAM space say 32 GB and above and good disk space say 1 terabyte and above with quality VGA card in most cases so because most of the output is video graphic so VGA card uh, sometimes uh, facilitates the, the calculation increases the speed but this is also a function of the software that one uh, uses except for case of supercomputer the example of computer specifications given above are based on our experience even with this calculation of a model cube dimension less than 8 cm spans for several days to weeks theoretically lower specification computers may work as well but the computational time will be longer yeah so you could use like here I've said uh, 32, ter uh, 32 GB RAM Theoretically, you can use a lower GB RAM. It may work, but then the computational time will be longer. So the potential application areas in ROC, uh, uh, actually the purpose of this video now is to focus on, on uh, solving ROC problems. So I'll be a little biased from here. So in, in ROC, for example, we need to ensure that these walls are in rock mining these walls are stable so that people inside the tunnel are not hurt also oil and gas mining down there we have tunnels that we need to ensure is stable in hydroelectric power we don't need this water to seep uh, in the 
to seep out uh, because then if it seeps out then the embankment here is in danger of collapse and yeah so we need to ensure the tunnel is stable for nuclear repository we need to ensure that the the lining is not cracking to release radiation that can contaminate our groundwater uh, uh, and also uh, this is why we say we prefer DEM that answers the question of when and how such that if we know the cracking mechanism then we can design appropriate measures to avoid uh, the, the harm for example in this case to seal it in enough time to seal the lining in enough time so that the radiation cannot leak to contaminate groundwater again while you do uh, tunneling uh, the uh, concrete uh, lining is always put here so when when we understand the cracking mechanism is important such that the tunnel is kept safe so that people are not harmed